Good morning, First Baptist Church of Herndon, and welcome to our worship time together. We're back on the porch. It's a beautiful day, and I'm glad you're joining in with us. Today's a very special day in the life of our church. Today is our graduation Sunday, and we have four high school graduates and one seminary graduate that we are celebrating today. This is one of those years where we have these young individuals who have been such a part of our church. Going back and, and being a part of our children's ministry and our youth ministry, and it means so much for us to celebrate the accomplishment of their graduation. So I know you will join me in celebrating their good, wonderful work in this great accomplishment. I also want to let you know that the, the regathering task force has met and are making a recommendation to the deacons. The deacons will be meeting today after worship. And after that meeting, I hope to have some information to share with you about our plans for regathering. Something that I can share with you is that we are working on having some kind of event in our parking lot on a Saturday evening or a Sunday evening. This will not take place of our worship, but it'll be a time where we can just be in the same space together, perhaps waving at each other and talking from a great distance. We're working on that, so pay attention to see that information coming to you. I'm so thankful that you continue to tune in and that we can be the presence of Christ together even as we are apart. Let's take this moment and begin our worship with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, the beauty of the earth and the calmness of this day helps to remind us of your strength, your love, your grace, and your care. We are thankful that you have been with us through all of this and that you continue to show up to guide us in our worship and our work. We do invite your spirit to come, Lord. Come into our home come into the homes of all of our church people and speak to us, move in us, and lead us, we pray. We ask these things through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
We are standing here with Juanita, who graduated on June the 3rd, yep. and so she is already a high school graduate. Yep. How does it feel? I mean, it feels good to be done, especially with everything that's going on. It's good. Good. So, we, your church, celebrate this great accomplishment with you. And normally we would have you in front of church and do this in front of everybody, but this is how we're doing it now. So I, we want to give you this gift. This is a gift from the church for you. And then this is a bunch of cards from individuals in the church for you. Thank you. So we want to give that to you. Now, tell us, what are your plans now that you're free? What are you going to do next? All right, so I got into Virginia State, but with like everything going on, there's probably going to be online classes. So I plan to keep it safe and go to Nova for, for a year and then transferred into the oh, oh yeah. that is good. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. That'll be excellent. So it is so good to see you. Congratulations. I remember way back when you were a little bitty when we did Bible schools yeah. and passport camps. Oh my gosh. <laughs> those first years. That was incredible. So we celebrate you. We cheer for you and we are thankful that you have gotten to this place. Let me offer you this blessing, okay? So now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord grant you grace as you enter into this new adventure. Amen. We are here now with Kyle Florence, who, did you just have your graduation? I did. At the high school. Yep. So today it is official. You are a graduate from high school. So we celebrate that with you. Normally we would be in front of the church, but we can't do that. So we are here at your home and we want to share uh, this gift with you. This is a gift from the church. You can just hold on to that. And then this right here are cards. This bag is full of cards from the people from your church. We want to celebrate this occasion with you. So we are thankful for you. We're thankful that we have watched you grow up in our church, that we've been able to share in this moment, and we celebrate this great day. So what's next for you? Well, I'm going to go to college at Nova for two years, and then uh, maybe transfer to Virginia Tech. Oh, that sounds excellent. Well, let me offer you a blessing. So now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord grant you grace as you embark on your new adventure. Amen. We are excited, Maddie, to celebrate with you the, your graduation from high school. And you literally just went through the process, right? Just yeah. a few minutes yeah, ago. I went through the graduation by... I just went through the front of the school at one. My appointment time was 1:40. We just got out. We got. We parked our car. Just got out. Uh, they handed me my diploma and everything. They said congratulations. They had the small podium in front. I walked up and I just played the music and uh, took some pictures there, holding my diploma. And uh, then after that, we walked a little to the left and just took some pictures behind the HHS sign and uh, just did. So they you are a high school graduate right now. Yeah, yeah. All right. Congratulations. Well, we, your church, celebrate with you. And at a normal time, we would be at church doing this, but we can't do that. But this is a gift to you from your church. Thank you. All right. And then this is a bunch of cards from people in the church oh, wow. who want to congratulate oh, wow. you Thank on you so your much. gift. So Thank congratulations. You. Hey, what are you going to do now? What's What's the future? Oh, oops. Uh, well, I'm just planning on going to Nova because everyone's been saying, suggesting that for me, and also it's Good. a safe and cheap option. Good. And Good. if uh, everything goes according to plan, hopefully I go to like the top colleges like Virginia Tech, James Madison, yeah. and just pursue my dream there. That's great. That's wonderful. So we remember when you were shorter than yeah. me in Bible yeah. school, yeah. and we are so glad. Thank yeah. you. We celebrate you, and let me offer you this blessing. So now may the Lord bless you and keep you. 
May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord grant you grace as you go forth on this new adventure. Amen. Okay, here we are with Molly Marsh, who we tracked down all the way in Memphis, Tennessee. How are you doing, Molly? Doing good. Doing good. I mean, obviously, as good as you can be when you're in the middle of quarantine for however many weeks at this point, but we're good. Good. Well, we know that typically we would be in front of the church doing this, and we're sorry that we can't do that. But on behalf of First Baptist Church of Herndon, we want to celebrate you. We want to celebrate your graduation, and we want you to know that we are behind you. We're pulling for you and celebrate you all the way in, in your future endeavors. So just um, just remind me, you were going to graduate, or you, I guess, have already graduated from Chantilly High School, and the date, the date was June 2nd. Is that right? June 2nd. All right. We're sorry that you could not officially be a part of that, um, but we are thankful that you have reached this milestone. Now, what's your plans for next year, for the fall? What are you going to do? Well, next year I will be attending BCU Arts with a hopeful major in scenic design. So I'll be, de I'll be working on designing all the sets for all of their shows and hopefully being able to pursue that professionally. Awesome. All right. That is exciting. So you're going to actually uh, major in something that you're really passionate about and you've participated in. We've seen you in plays and, <laughs> and, and, and hey, Richmond is a good place for, for the arts and for theater. So hopefully you'll be able to jump right into that. So that's, that's really cool. That's <laughs> good. Are you going to be able to move in? Uh, yes, we actually, we just heard on June 3rd of what the plan was going to be. So we're going to do a uh, phased in moving and then classes are going to start on time, which is really exciting. Good. That's excellent. Well, on behalf of First Baptist Church of Herndon, we have a couple of things for you. We have a gift here for you that we will deliver when you're back in <laughs> Northern Virginia. Thank uh, you. And then this right here is a bag full of cards from church people to you. They are excited and celebrating with you. It, it is full of cards. And we will give that to you as well. So I want to say to you, Molly, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord grant you grace to go forth and do incredible and awesome things in this new part of your life. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. So here we are with Kay Scary, who did not graduate from high school, but we know that she graduated from seminary and that is an incredible accomplishment and we are so excited and we celebrate this with you. I remember back when you were interning and we were talking about it and it just seemed like almost an impossible dream. And here it is. It has happened. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I did graduate high school, just not this year. <laughs> <laughs> So we want to celebrate with you, and we are giving you a gift, but the gift is not in this bag, <laughs> okay. because the gift has not arrived yet. Okay. So the First Baptist Church of Herndon is giving you your own pastoral robe oh my God. in celebration That's so exciting. of your seminary graduation. Thank you. That's really exciting. <laughs> now I can to stop wearing shorts. <laughs> It that's will so be wonderful. here in a few weeks, oh, so and it is yours to have. Thank you. All Thank right. you. That's so exciting. We're going to give you this that Thank has some you. other gifts in it. Thank you. And hey, what's your plans now? Tell us what's going to happen moving forward. Yeah, I 
plan to, I love the work I'm being, I've been able to do with the nonprofit that I work for, and so I'll stay there for now. I feel like, um, I feel dedicated to that and feel really dedicated to Herndon and First Baptist Herndon, and so I'm excited to keep learning with you all and to keep figuring out alongside you what it means to, to take care of our community, and that's the plan for now. All right, so, well. Yeah, thank you so much. This is so wonderful. We celebrate this great accomplishment with you. Thank you, everyone. May the Lord bless you and keep you and watch over you and send you forward with his grace to do incredible and awesome things. Amen. 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 Thank you. I am so thankful for our graduates, and I'm thankful for a church that cares deeply for them and celebrates with them. As we move into a time of prayer, we're going to pray for our graduates. Pray that God will continue to lead them and guide them and help them. And I know you will join me in praying for them as well. As we come together for this time of prayer, it's important that we pray for our country especially as we deal with our racial past. Let's pray that this country continues to move forward, to do what is right and what is good, that we can learn to listen to each other, to love each other, and grow with a deeper understanding of each other. I also want to ask that we be mindful of the people that have asked for our prayers, those that have had surgery, those that have lost loved ones, those that are dealing with difficult news. We need each other, and prayer is a good way to show our support, to go to God and ask God for help. So let's do that now. Let's gather our hearts, and let's go to the Lord. Gracious and almighty God, I give you thanks for the opportunity to be a part and our graduates' lives, and the way that our church was able to minister to them, be with them, and how we celebrate with them now. Lord, we do lift them up to you in prayer. We ask that you continue to guide them, strengthen them, nurture them, and help them as they walk into this new chapter of their lives. Bless them, keep them, and be with them. Gracious Lord, we are thankful that as a church, we celebrate things together. And as we celebrate, we know that you are at work and doing wonderful things. But Lord, we also know that when times are tough, when loved ones are facing difficulties, we can also gather together and pray to you to ask for your help. So, Lord, please continue to be with our friends that are sick and suffering, those that are fighting cancer, those that are trying to recover from surgeries, those that have lost loved ones and are pulling things together. Be with those that are struggling with work right now, that have lost their income. Continue to be with those that that are re-entering the workforce and find it so very hard in this pandemic to work. Be with those that are struggling with mental health and with other issues. And Lord, we lift up our country to you. We ask that you would guide us, show us the way to deal with our troubled racial past, Help us to make things right. Help this to be a lasting change, a good change, and show us the way. We give you thanks, Lord. You have promised that you will never leave us, 
that you're always with us, guiding us and keeping us. So we offer this prayer in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Because of the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord, there is peace. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Now, let us share the peace with each other. as part of our worship, we're going to have a time of giving, an offering. You know, I am so thankful for the way that you, the church, have continued to give during this time. We're not meeting together and so many people are giving. I'm thankful for that. And I'm hopeful that that will continue because that helps us to continue to be the presence of Christ here in Herndon, that helps us to be a place that can spearhead a ministry like Herndon Cares. So your gifts are very important. Thank you for the way that you're giving. And I also want us to think about ways that we can give to our neighbors, to our loved ones, and to our friends. Whether it's just a kind word, a smile, a card, a phone call. Let's think about how we can be giving people in this time. All right, let's pray together. Gracious and loving God, we are thankful for the many blessings we've received. In the midst of this terrible pandemic, you are showering us with blessings and we're thankful for that. And Lord, we want to continue to give. We want to open up our hearts to share our love and your love, our gifts and our abilities. So, Lord, we pray that you would bless the offerings that we offer today, that you would bless them to be received, that they may show your glory, and that your kingdom may be seen, felt, tasted, and known throughout our town. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Matthew's Gospel. It's the ninth chapter. And we're going to read the last couple of verses of the ninth chapter and into the tenth chapter. Hear now these words. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. 
Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go therefore among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without payment, give without payment. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Every week for the past few years, we have closed out our worship service by reading a passage of scripture and then following that up by reading our vision statement. Our vision statement is to be the presence of Christ by sharing the love of God one person at a time. I think it's an appropriate vision statement and one that we really strive to follow. But if we're gonna live into that, I think it's important for us time to time to look at who Jesus is. If, if we are his presence, if we are the ambassadors for Christ, representing Christ in the world today, we need to take a look at who Jesus is and what Jesus did. And so we're going to do that over the next couple of weeks. Take a look at how Jesus was present with us and how we can be his presence in the world today. I think our scripture passage really sums up a lot of the things that Jesus did. We know that Jesus is our Savior. We know that he came and he died for us. We know that he rose from the dead and overcame all kinds of sin and death. But we also see Jesus as one who proclaims the kingdom of God, a teacher, a healer, somebody that was moved with compassion. We find this this Jesus of Nazareth is one who did amazing and wonderful events and surprised people, challenged people, and changed the entire world. And so we want to take a look, a deeper look at who Jesus is so we can grow and be in his presence in the world. Right there we see it. We see so much of it. In this passage of scripture, then Jesus went about the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Right here in this passage, we see that Jesus is proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. He went around saying that God is up to something. God is doing something in me. We see that Jesus cured every disease, every illness. He was a healer. That's a part of who Jesus was. He was a teacher going into the synagogues every Sabbath and teaching the people. 
He had compassion for the crowds. He would see people, he would see their situation, the hardships that they had, and he was moved by that, moved into action. We also see that he sent out helpers, his disciples, to do the work and share in the work. In later weeks, we're going to see that he was also a servant, and he calls us to be servants too. And that he was one who fought for justice, he was an advocate for justice. And to be his presence, we must be co-laborers for justice as well. But today, today, I just want us to think about three of the ways that Jesus was present to the people and what his presence meant. What we see in our scripture is that Jesus was a proclaimer. That he went and he proclaimed the kingdom of God is here. We see that Jesus was a teacher. He was teaching people about God and helping them to understand how God was at work in this moment. And we also see that he is one who was sending people out. So for us to be the presence of Christ means that we need to proclaim the good news. We need to teach people about Jesus, and we need to understand that we are people who are sent by Jesus to share in his work. What does it mean to proclaim? Well, Jesus had a mission to come into the earth and to say, God is at work. God is working through me to proclaim it, to name it, to say it, to grab people's attention so that they could pay attention to how God was working in new ways. And so we are called to also proclaim this, to look at our own lives and to see how Jesus touches us and how God's kingdom is present in our lives right now. And to share that with people. We also see that to be the presence of Christ is to take up teaching. Teach about Jesus, about God. You know, we began this year with a sermon series on the Sermon on the Mount. Some of Jesus' greatest teachings. And we know that he was a great teacher. Teaching about God. Teaching about how God was working and at work in this time. He taught his disciples. He taught the crowds. He even taught individuals that came up to him. And for us to be the presence of Christ, we have to take on the teaching of Jesus as well. Now, that doesn't mean that we're all teachers, because we're not. But we can help share in the teaching ministry. We can join in the teaching ministry of the church. And we can find our ways to teach others the stories of Jesus, the love of Jesus, the passion and care of Jesus. And then third, we need to understand that we are a people who are sent out. Jesus was sent to us. That was his mission, to take human form on earth, to die, to share love, to be present with us. And so our life as followers of Christ isn't about just showing up in a building, but it is understanding that we are people sent out to do the work. Now, not all of us are called to be professional missionaries or ministers, but I believe we all have a calling, something that, that God calls us to do. Maybe it's as simple as, as showing up and offering kindness or compassion, hospitality to those that aren't receiving it. In the places where you are, where you find yourself right now, do you see a need for a change? And can you be that change? Do you work in a place that is difficult and stressful that maybe could use kindness? Can you bring the kindness to that? Can you see people that, that need help? Can you just smile and be a warm presence for people? I remember a story about a lady who was teaching her congregation how to understand their own calling. 
And she told the story of a woman who lived in a nursing facility. And she began to understand her calling was to provide positive conversation at dinner. They would all gather at a table for dinner and most of the conversation was negative because people didn't know what to talk about. And when you don't know what to talk about, you, you begin to, to realize that if you're negative, people will talk about the negativity. And she was tired of the negative talk at the table and wanted something deeper. So she realized that her calling was to provide positive, constructive conversation at dinner. She understood her calling every day was to come up with a question to ask everyone at the table so that they could have deeper conversation. That's how we can be sent into the world to do the work of Christ. So to be the presence of Christ is to be active in the work of Christ. God was present with us, and now we are called to continue that work by being present to the world. We do that by proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. We do it by teaching, and we do it by understanding our own calling and seeing where we can plug in right where we are. So I want to challenge you to do three things this week. Three things. First, I want you to think about what it is to proclaim the kingdom of God in your own life. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about the times that you have experienced the presence of Christ in your daily life. Write it down list them, and then think about who you can share those moments with. Maybe it's someone that you live with, or a good friend, or another church member. Practice sharing the ways you've experienced God in your own life. Second, I want you to think about the teaching ministry that we have at church. And I understand right now we're not having Bible study or Sunday school because of of COVID-19, but that's been a big part of our church. And maybe you need to commit to participating or helping out in a Sunday school class or with a Bible study. Maybe you want to volunteer to teach or be a substitute teacher. You can do it. You really can. Or maybe you need to think about the people that you can teach that are in your own life by just sharing stories about Jesus and asking what they mean and educating people on who Jesus is. And then third, I want you and all of us to take serious our own callings. How can we live out the calling and be sent right where we are? You know, it's interesting in this scripture passage, Jesus told the disciples, I don't want you to go to the Gentiles. I don't want you to go to the Samaritans. I want you to go to your own people right where you are. Of course, he would send them to the Samaritans and to the Gentiles later. But at first, he called them to go right where they are. Where are we? And what is God calling us to do? I want you to think about that. So think about what it is to proclaim. And start proclaiming with the people you know. How can you help the teaching ministry of our church? And then where is God calling you right where you are? That's how we continue to be the presence of Christ and share the love of God one person at a time. I'm thankful for the work that we do together and for the amazing things First Baptist Church of Herndon has done in its rich history. Let's keep going. Let's get better. Let's share Jesus with the world. Amen.
And now I invite you to join me in reading a scripture passage. We're back to Matthew 25. Let's read it together. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Therefore, let me strive to be the presence of Christ by sharing the love of God one person at a time. Thank you for worshiping with us again. Thank you for the work that you do to be the presence of Christ and to share God's love. We're going to continue to grow. We're going to continue to go continue to do God's good work. And as we go today, I want to offer our benediction. And so now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord grant you grace never to sell yourself short. Grace to risk something big for something good. Grace to know that the world is now too small for anything but truth and it's too dangerous for anything but love. So now, may the Lord take your minds and think through them. May the Lord take your lips and speak through them. And may the Lord take your hearts and set them on fire. Amen.